they will struggle with the idea of, of going um, to see a, a counselor, a psychologist, um, because there's all this this whole debate of you know Christianity and counseling and all that, and isn't the Bible then sorting you know all my issues? Mm. But uh, someone just simply said, uh, when you're sick, you just like you've just said, when you're sick, you you go see a doctor. You don't even like think so twice about that so much you know when it's something specific you have cancer you you, you get a specialist you go you go see an uh, an oncologist so if something is not okay with you know this is an organ your brain is an organ if something is not okay with my brain then why shouldn't i go see a psychologist Hello there, welcome to Tuesday Connect and today we'll be tackling a pertinent question. What is the role of counselling in a Christian life? With me are my dear friends and I'll ask them to introduce themselves. So yeah, go ahead. Um, hi, uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited to do this. I'm Margaret Mungai, um, a trained counsellor um, and I'm a Mlakite. Yes. I'm uh, Ramson, Chebosi is my name, I'm a pastor here, and it's an honor to be part of this conversation. Earlier we had mentioned with Ramson that we are probably uh, sitting here to partake from the wisdom of Maggie, so if you realize and recognize that we are more listeners like you, uh, yeah, we are modeling how to understand counseling. So here goes, Maggie, maybe yes. the first question would be to you, what is counseling? Counseling is, uh, in just very simple terms, it's just talk therapy where you uh, get a professional who is trained in the field. If you have a distressing issue, something you feel, um, I'm not able to handle this on my own and um, you just go and speak with them and it's done in, in an unjudgmental and confidential space. Okay. Yes. Mm. I hear a lot of people uh, refer to a counsellor, a therapist, a psychologist and a psychiatrist. Is there a difference between all those terms? Yes, there is. Uh, basically, as we've said, uh, counseling is talk therapy. So uh, if you go to see a counselor, if you go to see a psychologist, then that is basically uh, you're seeing a therapist. And there's uh, a difference in that um, a, a psychologist will be more trained than the counselor. Um, a counselor may just be uh, trained in, in, in the basics of it, the basics of counseling and all that. Um, a psychologist would have to to have, um, say, a degree in, in, in psychology. And uh, a psychiatrist is different than because he's a full medical doctor who can prescribe medication for any uh, mental health disorder. Yes. So what I hear is all of them can be therapists. Yes. One gives medication, that's yes. a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist, yes. The psychologist has studied the science of psychology. The therapist is all of them. And yes. the counselor could have just the basics of talk Ca therapy. Yes. All right, yes. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Pastor Ramso, now that we understand what counseling is, uh -huh. what are the perceptions and um, perspectives of counseling in our context? Um. I think uh, the, we, we can first of all start with the psychiatrist. We, we can call him uh, on the street. The, mm -hmm. If you see a guy next to you selling some uh, medication, would you consider that your psychiatrist? You even chap a story with him and he tells you how you're doing, you tell him how your life is. Uh, you know, that's our local psychiatrist. But mm -hmm. don't worry, don't worry. Uh, I would say the perspectives on counseling in our context. Uh, you would go look at it, uh, it's a broad perspective. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd say first. That initially, uh, I grew up looking at a counselor or a psychologist as that person that you go to, you know, you lie on a bed and then you start emptying out your soul um, to them. And then they, and in some times they would turn bad and control you and make you do stuff. That was in the movies. That was in the movies. But that, that was my first experience of uh, who a counselor was. Um, but I think the, as, a, as a community, as a country, as a people, there are different ways we, we have come to view them. While in some contexts, there is still skepticism about counseling. Uh, you know, counseling is for those who, uh, they are at their wit's end. That's when you go for counseling. You know, 
uh, where or you are turning mad or you are you know hallucinating that's when you say God, th- those are the kind of guys that go for counseling or your know, your life is in shambles and there's nothing you, you you seem to be out of control unable to manage your life that's when uh, that would be a lot of the perspectives common perspectives of uh, when to see a counselor however i think as more and more is being shared about what counseling is uh, there are those who are seeing uh, a counselor almost like a shepherd somebody to walk with you uh, you know to a certain degree there would also be a life coach of some sort so i think there's a varied perspective but uh, those would be some of the things i'm looking at and saying hey this is what i see uh, as our our context how the counselor is viewed mm-hmm. as you talk about uh, the coach and uh, you talk about a coach and something else you mentioned there mm-hmm. there's there's a uh, i think the underlying word in counseling is counsel and mm-hmm. so sometimes people will look at counseling as where i go for counsel Mm-hmm. and back in the day people would um find counsel either within the age set mm-hmm. there were structures within the society older mm-hmm. men working with younger men older women working with younger women and having those groups where they taught them stuff mm-hmm. the family fabric would ideally have a parent uh counseling their children or giving mm-hmm. them counsel or guidance mm-hmm. and then more and more that fabric has you know kind of lost it aunties were near you know we, we we grew up in families where, where people are not too far from one another but mm-hmm. so now the context of finding that guidance and counsel has has changed mm-hmm. and so we are now going to find guidance and counsel from life coaches whether it would be mentors mm-hmm. and stuff like that but as we heard from Maggie there is more to counseling than just mm-hmm. guidance right mm-hmm. so maybe you can first tell us what are the different forms of counseling there are uh, or what forms does counseling in itself take okay um <clears throat> just adding to what uh, adamson was saying you know that the setup that we we used to see in in movies someone is writing and all that and that's that's, that's the whole perspective we had when when, when it came to to counseling and uh, like you said it, we we felt like if if and i hope this has changed now that if if i'm going for counseling then there's something there's something wrong with me in not just something it's you know it's big it's horrible and it's um but that's that's not always the case um to answer your question personality in, in this context uh because there's a lot of you know therapy uh when it comes to counseling there's uh behavior and all that but in our context um i i believe you're talking about now secular secular counseling and um christian counseling and then we have biblical counseling yes uh would you like break them down a bit Yes um when it comes to secular counseling this is just purely uh, what you have learned in a psychology class mm-hmm. we we don't have god god in the picture it's what does science say what uh, is causing this anxiety the what what are the chemicals that are not balanced in my body in my you know and all that uh, but then when we come to christian counseling it's, it's a psychologist who has gone through this training but then they uh, will use the bible in what god says about us about our lives about the situation that you're going through uh, so you, they they tie they tie this in I have uh, maybe a depressive mood disorder uh, and um I'm not able to function I'm not able to do ABCD but then again um God's the Bible tells us about hope that our God is a God of hope so we yes we are going through this in psychology says this but also what does the Bible say about this what is God saying about you in your life mm-hmm. so we'll bring in that and uh biblical counseling then is totally different because um it's it's strictly from the Bible this is what i'm feeling you know i i have maybe this suicidal ideation um uh, what does the bible say about you know uh honoring god with our lives and all that it doesn't bring in the psychological bits right. of it yeah that helps so i guess for this episode we are going to be focusing more because we are talking about counseling in the life of a christian we're looking at christian counseling uh and and its role in our space Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'd ask uh maybe Ramson uh mm-hmm. 
as you look at life, people's experiences, your mm -hmm. interactions, your own experience, mm -hmm. what are the values of uh, counseling? Mm -hmm. And um, what are the potential pitfalls that would come with it? And this is open. Both of you can chime in. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have something, <laughs> I, I will also add. Uh, okay. Um, I think there are several uh, that we see. One big one that I personally see from my perspective is it's not everyone who has the benefit of some of the things that are offered by just being in community. I think we talked about the need, part of what the rise in the need of uh, counselors and Christian counselors in that case uh, is partly as a result of the disintegration of the societal nini, fabric. Mm. And as a result, there are more and more cases that need attention. Um, so as a result, you know, for example, you, you know, we, we, we talk of issues such as absentee, absentee dads, and that creates a lot of demand for, you know, we know the, some of the consequences of this that have led to, you know, we really need counselors to aid and help. So I would say looking at the, um, the disintegration and what society is and you know, basically the consequences of what seen are, for those people who might not have the blessings of uh, having a way to process what is going on, uh, a counselor is a quick uh, place that all of us can point you to. And we are not having to try and figure out where you are and you know we are trying something here and something there. But I think just the place of having a specified um, you know, person, uh, referral, a place that uh, you... You can say we have confidence in what they have done, in the kind of training they have undergone. I think that's such a blessing in view of just the kind of cases that we are seeing more and more in our context. Um, and even for the non-believer, I think one of the other values is that well, as they see a Christian counselor is sometimes through that process, some realization of themselves. They, there are questions they might end up answering or and asking that would lead them to the path of, uh, you know, getting to discover, is there more to life than what I have been living out to, uh, living out? So I think it's also an opportunity for evangelism, uh, not most likely directly just because of the ethics and of what is involved there, but just because I'm helping you discover more of truth, I'm helping you to discover more of what life is, I think that can lead somebody into a space where they are thinking more about their life and what it means and where they are headed to. And I think in many cases we've seen such conversations lead somebody to actually consider faith in God. Um, where the pitfalls, I, I see uh, them. So, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Okay. Maybe we can first chime in the values and then okay, we can all okay. chime in uh, the pitfalls. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, you are, yes, okay. Yes. <laughs> Maybe Maggie can chime in more Maggie, uh, values another... of uh, But I would say also just sometimes explaining, mm -hmm. there are some quick ways in which uh, there are things that it has, counseling in and of itself, not even just the specific seeing some one person, but just the place of counseling as something that has gotten more focus in the recent, in, in my life, you know. Uh, I would say is it challenges people to look in areas where they initially didn't care much to look into. Mm -hmm. uh, to look into, I, I think now a lot of people are putting focus into background mm -hmm. and baggage. Yeah. Uh, they ask themselves, you know, how was I brought up, and how is that influencing how I'm currently behaving? Mm -hmm. And as a result of such focus, uh, people are learning to sort out some issues and you know avoiding heartache and pain in the future. That's another benefit yeah. and value of seeing. Yeah, um, I agree uh, with Pastor Ramson. Um, like, like you had said earlier, the, if I could go to what you were saying earlier, things, um, our lives have, have really changed from what was happening before and what is happening now. And uh, say, for example, techn technology, the things that we are exposed to right now, it's not the, the things that, you know, uh, people were exposed to before. For example, um, 
drugs or just uh, like porn addiction, the things that were there before. Before it was just magazines. Now it's it's totally different. You know, it's visual and all that. Um, drugs. It's like they they are coming up with new drugs every day. There's then the, the mixture of this and that. So uh, even just um, just a usual what uh, drug intake, then it's it's uh, you can get easily uh, hooked up because of what what it is that that you're taking in your body because um, of of the changes that we we've, we've seen and uh, all this technology, all these innovations, and all that. And to talk about um, now the values, I would say uh, first of all, uh, I think biggest of all is the, the self awareness bit that that comes with it and you're able to to say uh, i am feeling like this because of this like uh, ramson mentioned the way we look um at what happened to us when we were kids uh the baggage that that, that we are carrying uh sometimes it, it doesn't even have to go that far yes it goes that far but sometimes it, it doesn't have to go that far sometimes in in the evening you you're feeling a certain type of way and now self-awareness calls for you to just, you know, you like, you trace back your steps and see uh, during the day this and this happened to me. You know, I had this conflict with someone and all that. And um, then it helps you just be aware of uh, why am I feeling this anger at this time? Why am I feeling anxious? What is causing me to feel this? So I would say um, the biggest value I, I would point out is, is the self-awareness bit that comes with it. I'm acting like this because of ABCD. I'm reacting to this because of ABCD. Because sometimes we just react to a situation that would otherwise be normal. But, you know, the way we react is just we tend to just blow things out of proportion. And you see someone reacting to something, you would have thought it's very simple. But then they react to it in such a huge way, and then you're wondering, what's, what's up? But then what has happened to us, what these things triggers, then informs the way we react and uh, act towards, towards things. So I would talk about self-awareness. Um, as a, There's others, but the biggest value in that is. I, I agree. Um, I think for me also, uh, self-awareness, why self-awareness is a big value is uh, first, I'm a Christian. I know I'm a fallen human being and in my fallenness and in my human wisdom or lack thereof, there are things I may do in response to something that has happened and I think it's the best thing. Mm -hmm. But when I sit uh, under the counsel of mm -hmm. someone who is, especially a Christian counselor, and they help me to see, wait, you know people who have gone through this do this. And then I realized, ah, it wasn't my wisdom. It was my human fallen thinking. And so I can be able to take that. I think the scripture I would bring into that space is taking every thought captive and bringing it to the submission of Christ. So that if I have maybe gone through betrayal, I have developed maybe a distrust or something. So I'm too cautious. I'm not engaging with people. I've isolated. I have put up walls. Then I realize this is not wisdom. This is human folly. But what mm -hmm. does God say? He says that he can heal, he can restore. And so it's possible to break a cycle, you know? If uh, you find something happened in your family and then it's happening in your life, it probably happened in generations, we may call that a generational curse. And there is power of, of supernatural forces. But it's possible for me to understand, wait a minute, that's how it was hap done. And this mm -hmm. is how it was imprinted into my life. And that's why I'm doing this. And I can take it, take it to the cross, deal with it, and mm -hmm. forge forth a, a better person so that my interactions with people are healthier, more godly, more Christ-like, mm -hmm. and then li my life and the lives of others are better. So I think for me, the biggest value in Christian counseling is that it helps me to understand the, mind, the human mind in a human broken way, and now take it to the cross. So I can't take counseling in and mm -hmm. of itself and just go with, I mean, like, psychology in and of itself, I want to take this in light of Christ because then it shows me this is a path you have been taking, but this is a path to life. So for me, the awareness and mm -hmm. what can result from that is the biggest. Okay. On the pitfalls, I think uh, you can look at things. Uh, uh, sometimes it's you, you use it for what it was not intended for. Uh, one one that I, I can see that uh, I've seen a, a danger is where you want to replace what uh, community should be doing for you. Uh, you you 
you want to have this person that you can speak to and empty out your heart to share your frustrations, share your joys and everything. And they can walk with you and discuss such issues without the work of building community, building authentic relationships, without the risk that vulnerability usually brings, um, where you can start saying, you know me, I, I have friends, but you know this uh, supporting your your culture or the culture of you know me. Nobody really knows me. You know how somebody can be. Sometimes I find people post and they are really happy to say, Ah, me. You deceive yourself. You know me, but you really don't know me. And we live a life that is, you know, we are acting. We are constantly, what, uh, you know, putting on masks everywhere where there is no genuine sharing of this is what I'm going through, this is how I'm processing this thing and then to help you with now the areas where you you because a human being can't bear that for too much for too long it, that it's it's a crushing weight that is too big uh, to bear so eventually you need a place to out uh, to you know to almost have an out sort of and you can make the therapist that person for you. So I live out here with masks, but you know I use the therapist for such uh, issues. So I think that's the one danger I see. Uh, I'll, you know, and that can be detrimental for especially a Christian, whom your life, uh, you know, your pursuits of life, counseling one another. You know, I think we're looking at uh, texts that talk about one another. And when we say, you know, bear one another's pains bear one another's burdens. If you are not willing to share and genuinely say, this is where I am, this is what I'm going through, you even deny yourself the opportunity for others to come into that space and actually walk the journey of faith with you. Uh, there's one of the passages that has been really helpful for me, I think in the last one or two years, has been Hebrews. I forget the chapter and verse, but it talks about, you know, see to it that none of you develops an unbelieving heart and for me to know Nyado is developing an unbelieving heart means Nyado is willing to open her heart to us and for us <coughs> excuse me <coughs> for us to see what is going on in her heart and that is through conversations on you know longings disappointments what you're going through life and if Nyado has decided that she's not going to share that part of her life because maybe it makes her look vulnerable or it actually makes her vulnerable to, you know, abuse or gossip or such things. Uh, instead, she can only share that with her therapist. It actually denies the community of faith the opportunity to do that watching over your soul and watching over your heart that they should be doing. So that just I think that's one of the things that I just see as an abuse of counseling can result to yeah, or a temptation that can be there. Maybe an over-reliance on counseling? Yes, yeah, it's an yeah. over-reliance. It's, uh, it's trying to make it do what it was not supposed to actually do. Yeah. All right. Mark, do you want to chime in? Yes. Um, if if I, I would uh, add to what you just said, um, when you said over-reliance, then there's also over-dependence. You can just be overly dependent on your therapist. Like you're not able to just... You know, there are those things I think you had said earlier. There are those things that belong to the therapist table. There are those that don't. Uh, so when when then you fully depend on this person, mm -hmm. you're not able to grow that. There's that resilience that you need to grow as human beings. Yes, I'm going through this, but am I able to, you know, work things out on my own before I take this to, to the therapist? And when we say this, we are not so, we're not minimizing things because someone may be uh, listening and then they, they then minimize their issues. Um, do I really need to talk about this? So long as it's something that's, you know, um, the intensity of it, you're not able to handle, then it's okay, then go get help. But uh, it's also good to grow that resilience that I'm going through this, but maybe I can be able to navigate through this. This I can handle. This other one I can't, and I need help with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think I would also add, there is, a, there is an, again, I'll write on what you're saying, not to minimize, because only you and God can mm -hmm. tell the, the differentiation of the things we are talking about here. Mm -hmm. There are things that me working with God faithfully on my 
Christian journey, I can deal with, right? But if I am not cultivating that with God, I'm either going to go to people, mm-hmm. they may disappoint me, mm-hmm. or they may not be able to help me, and then I get hurt, and it adds to the pain I was going through, and then uh, I need to go to the therapist. Mm-hmm. So there's a place for, as a Christian, cultivating my personal relationship with God. There are things he will reveal to me in that space. There, mm-hmm. there are things at, that go to the counselor's table. There are things that uh, my community will help me with. And there are things me and God need to deal with. Not to say that I can't, one of the things God has shown me may not need to the, see the therapist. But that's what I'm saying. Every one of us would need to sit with God to know where every one of these things are. They're like this mm-hmm. one's of this is actually me refusing to confess my sins to one another and pray for one another that I may be healed. You get, I'm actually refusing to be open uh, to my community in my context of my journey of faith. And so I'm going to the therapist. But there are also things that maybe me and God can do, right? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the pitfall would also be that I do away with God completely. Or, yeah, like there's a way... I don't know how to put it. Is it the secular counseling where I, I can actually take and put God aside? Yeah, you get God out of this yeah. equation. Yeah. Especially, I think, even the vulnerability where maybe what I'm dealing with, I probably feel God has something to do with it. So I'm angry mm-hmm. at God. So you're telling me to go to God to do what? He's the one who caused it. I put him aside. Let's deal with the therapist. And mm-hmm. it, it takes away from my work with God. And... Uh, yeah, and it's not sustainable. So I think the pitfall would be my doing away with the community, my doing away with God, especially where I feel God has let me down. Mm. And so I'm walking, oh, he's not making sense, so I walk away. So I need to keep uh, holding both, uh, mm-hmm. that I may need this therapist for this, and it explains what I'm going through. It helps me bear the weight of whether it's grief or trauma or something, but there's a place for God in my life. I think mm-hmm. the biggest would be losing my work with God uh, in that space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be my greatest pitfall. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, huh. What should I do, or when would I? When would you? How would I know, or when would you recommend for someone to go for counseling? How will I know when I need to go through counseling? Uh, uh, I think there's something I saw uh, that says we, 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 okay, we, we can't take this uh, in the literal sense that sometimes you're, you're, you're the best doctor, you know, my, my own <laughs> self, best doctor, because yeah. I know what's really hurting, what's really uh, bothering me. And, and so if, if you're able to, like we're just talking about self-awareness, you know, mm-hmm. that examination, self-examination and saying, I'm not okay. But they, what, what I'm going through, what I'm struggling with, mm-hmm. I am just not okay. And, and maybe uh, to deal with this, you are getting into um, there are those coping mechanisms that we will, you know, pick up to cope with whatever it is that's happening behind the scenes. They're the healthy ones. They are those that are not so healthy. So when, when I do this self-examination and I see um, I'm not doing okay, I'm not able to handle this, you know, if... These thoughts come in my head. I need to maybe, you know, escape through drugs, through alcohol and all that. Um, just that self-examination that, that tells you you're not okay. If you feel you're not okay and you need to speak with someone, then that is the right time to go speak with someone. Um, like you said, we're going to repeat this. Uh, there, there are those things that you, you will need to see a therapist for. There are those things that maybe you need to see your pastor for. There are those things... Maybe you just need to speak with your best friend. So uh, just being able to sort through that mess. Sometimes it's it's hard uh, when, when when you're going through all these things. Maybe you're not able to sort through the mess in your head. Someone can can then if you go speak with someone. If if I come speak with you, then maybe you're able to tell me. Um, maybe you need to elevate this issue. Maybe you need to see uh, to see a psychologist and all that. If you're not able to do that by yourself, uh, but sometimes the issue with someone telling you to to go see a counselor is we we tend to resist that. I, I I don't think there are many people who get told you need to go see a psychologist and then you know they jump at the idea and they they will do that. It's uh, like uh, people who struggle with alcohol. If 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 you're you're struggling with alcoholism and then you're told to you know to go for these programs and all that, most people will resist until you get to that point of um, I need to go. 
It's like those people who don't like going to the hospital. Then you tell them, go see a doctor. They won't go. But when, when you see them deciding, okay, I need to go see a doctor, you're even surprised. You're like, oh, finally, you want to go see a doctor. Because sometimes we just need to get to that point of, I need help. So yes, it's okay and you can do that, but uh, we also need to, the person might need to get to that point themselves that they will acknowledge I'm not okay and I need help. Yes. Mm -hmm. What I hear is that there could be a lot of stigma to making the step towards the therapist. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not external stigma, it's my own stigma towards what that means about me. Mm -hmm. And so what I hear then is if honestly, if you sit with yourself honestly, you'd be able to tell if this is something that I'm stuck at and I need to find help and it, it's okay to seek mm. help. Mm. How then do I tell someone to go for help? Like, mm. okay, it's not me. Mm. So how do I, when do I know it's time to recommend my, f my sister, my brother, my mm. friend for therapy or for counseling? Mm. I'm also going to relate uh, Pastor Ramson <laughs> under that. Uh, I think uh, it would depend <laughs> with uh, what are we talking about and where do I feel uh, you're at? Okay, sometimes the danger with that is you're not, maybe the person that I'm speaking with is not like a trained counselor and all that. They're not able maybe to see, when, when you speak with a counselor, they're able to pick things up that say, this person is not at a good place. Maybe uh, someone is talking about, say, suicide, and then you think ah, it's just, you know, they're talking about it, about it in passing. But a counselor is, is able to see what is the plan, what, because there are those steps that someone will have. If, if I want to commit suicide, what am I going to use? What time, you know, where, when, when, you, um, when, you, when you listen and you're trained, you're able to say, this person is not at, at a good place. So sometimes the danger is the person that I'm speaking with is just my friend, and then I will think, ah, they will just get over it. And you know you're different, I'm different. The way you would handle something is not the way uh, that I would handle it. Um, I think it would just call for, again, self-awareness, and you know yourself, and now you just take it to, 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 the, to the other person and, and looking at them and knowing this person is not a good place. The things that they are saying, the things that they are doing, sometimes people will get into these risky behaviors and you're like, uh, this is not you. So if you if you notice that, and it has to be maybe someone who's very, who's very close to you for you to notice this change and to notice this is not the way they handle this, this is not the way they do things, and then, then you're able to tell them, you need to go for help. And then it has to be... I think there's the place for tough love and there's sometimes we need to be soft. So maybe you can make it like a suggestion. Do you think that maybe, you know, mm -hmm. because sometimes when, when you use tough love and you're like, okay, you go, see, I can't say, <laughs> why, what's wrong with, and then they are going to resist that. In the moment they put up that wall, you want to be able to get through to them. So it would be, it would be a very tricky place. Um, though then again, this is someone you know, so maybe you know how they take things. Do I need to use tough love? Do I need to make it suggestive? Maybe you should go, or okay, tomorrow we're going to go see. And sometimes it, it, it helps. Uh, there are those circumstances where you can then accompany this person. Maybe the, the first session, the first, it's okay, then you can do that. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, what I hear is that one, if someone is suicidal, we are not going to toy with that thought. We are going to see how we are going to help them get help. Mm -hmm. the, the bid for suicidal, we are not going to play around with it, it could be real, right? Mm -hmm. But also I hear you say that it's important for us to cultivate mm -hmm. deep, authentic relationships where by the time I'm coming to tell you, it's coming from a good place. We have developed that trust enough for you to know when I'm saying this, I have my best, your best interest at heart and I'm not judging you. So it can't be someone I met today or someone's brother or sister I've had out there uh, who I'm just telling you need to go for therapy. So in a sense, maybe it's for us also to cultivate relationships, like uh, Ramson is saying, in community with people who we trust enough so that if they ever suggest that probably we need help, it's probably something that they have observed and prayerfully considered uh, to help us with that. So let's cultivate those relationships. Let's allow people into our lives. Let's be authentic. Let's share where we are and what's going on. That way the people around us may know and be able to help us when we can't see that Johari window uh, where something is going on that we need support about. And sometimes it's even to say, you know, you, it's actually a habit to consider, to develop listening to counsel. Yeah. Because uh, we talk about only fools don't listen to counsel. Yeah. And we, you don't want to be the fool who 
you know, you left your life, messed it up simply because you're not willing to acknowledge him. Maggie said, I, I didn't actually give consideration to what Maggie said, um, though it might be tough. Um, I, so I think that's something that we as Christians ought to be considering, uh, you know, and developing in ourselves. Am I somebody who takes, uh, it takes correction and instruction uh, and am I actually putting it into practice? You know, when I notice a someone touches on something that's going on in my life, am I somebody who's quick to actually consider it? Uh, am I, uh, you know, when a friend, we were doing a BS and said, hey, I noticed how you responded to that question or I noticed how you responded to that rude conductor. I noticed how you, uh, is there, you know, what was going on? Or why did you, you know, respond in anger? And so I think we ought to be a people who are developing that because it is necessary for life. Because I think we talk about the fact that none of us is all knowing, none of us is all powerful and capable to run their own life. And therefore, and it's in God's counsel and in God's wisdom, He has put people around us to call us out. You know, for example, you know, we know Jesus gives the example of when somebody is caught up in a scene. Uh, that's Paul. He says, when somebody is caught up in sin, in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore them. So, you know, we see you caught up in drunkenness. There is a place for us to, to come and call you out of it and help you and help restore you. But if you are not somebody who has developed a heart of listening to people when before the crisis came, it becomes very difficult to actually save you out of, you know, you become the person who is slapping the hand that is reaching out to save you from drowning. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, as you said, you know, developing that culture and that habit. And to a certain extent, that humility of actually whenever criticism or, you know, I, I think of David, you know, when he is running away from Absalom and he sees this guy who is, you know, hitting him and talking down at him and hurling insults at him. And he's willing to say, perhaps the Lord has sent him. Uh, I think that kind of uh, attitude where as correction comes our way or feedback that is negative, our willingness to actually give it consideration because sometimes that might just be the counsel that gets you to sit down with somebody and they are able to pick out something and say, hey, you actually had a big issue here that was you know, eating you up. And when somebody said, are you willing to see someone on this, you said, okay, I would actually consider it. And, you know, you were willing to accompany and somebody told you, you know, I'd, I'll go with you for the first session. Mm -hmm. And you are willing to actually take it up. It takes a heart of humility. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's a big challenge. You know, we are not, human beings are not known to be humble. We tend to be more proud. And I think that's why it's, uh, as Maggie is pointing out, it's difficult for most people when they are told you need to see someone for them to actually take that and actually give consideration to it. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you've talked to me, you've helped me understand that seeking counsel or counseling, let me call it that, as a Christian, is not a lack of faith. It's just like, okay, I'm unwell, my legs are swollen, I'm having headaches, I need to see a doctor, mm -hmm. right? I can't seek uh, counseling uh, for my emotional and mental well-being. And that doesn't say I have lost my faith. So how do I know who are good? Or how, what are the things to consider when I am looking out for a counselor? And maybe both of you can chime in. All right. Um, thank you for that question. Now, uh, like, like you've rightly pointed out, uh, most Christians, Christians, they will struggle with the idea of, of going... Um, to see a, a counselor, a psychologist, um, because there's all this this whole debate of you know Christianity and counseling and all that, and isn't the Bible then sorting you know all my issues? Mm. But uh, someone just simply said, uh, when you're sick, you just like you've just said, when you're sick, you you go see a doctor. You don't even like think so twice about that so much. You know, when it's something specific, you have cancer, you you, you get a specialist, you go you go see an, an oncologist. So if something is not okay with, you know, this is an organ, your brain is an organ. If something is not okay with my brain, then why shouldn't I go see a psychologist? 
because this is, you know, someone who's trained, you know, to help you just, uh, you know, deal with whatever is going on um, there. So how do I choose a counselor? Um, I think like like we, we, we first say there's secular, you know, the, then there's Christian and biblical counseling. Uh, and sometimes in different situations, you will maybe need different uh, counseling in, 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 in all this. So as, as a Christian, definitely we would encourage you to go see to go see a Christian counselor. But I, I think at some point you're saying, I'm struggling with this thing that God has hurt me. I... I am not okay with God, first of all. And, and, and so if you go see a Christian counselor, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, can we pray? And you're like, me and God, we are not even okay. So uh, sometimes there would be the space for, then for secular counseling. But then again, uh, you also need to be aware of the fact that, uh, you know, we might not have God in that in that picture. And Christian counseling, it's, it, it would be the best the best option of, of all this. That's, that's what I would say. Um, that being said, there, there are also other issues where you would uh, just need biblical counseling. You don't need, it's not a psychological issue. It's just something that you need to, you know, handle with your pastor who is doing this biblical counseling. So uh, self, self-evaluation bits. And, and if you're confused, you can, you can get help. Sometimes there, there's someone who will go to a psychiatrist. We say psychiatrist, someone who will be, you know, uh, Yes, dispensing medication and all that, but then they can bump down your issue and say you actually don't need to be here. Maybe you need to go see a psychologist. And 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 so if you're confused about where you should be, sometimes it's you. You might go see a pastor. Your pastor. You might go see a pastor, and then the pastor will feel like this issue needs you know the Christian psychologist to deal with this. So uh, sometimes don't 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 be so afraid of getting it wrong. You might uh, just get direction if uh, as you go this, you might be told then go this way but um self self examination what am i feeling what am i going through what what help do i need here now that would help yes but i think the first choice is as you're doing this is mamlaka we would encourage you to please get a christian psychologist yes okay. yeah ramson ah if you if you're in mamlaka my, you know, I think sometimes we can only speak for our context. Mm. Uh, if you're in Mamlaka, I would, I would encourage you to come see a pastor. Mm. Come, come ask for mm. Pastor Nyado. Uh, she, she, she has people who can, and she, she can help you. And I think, um, I see in the scriptures a big call for us to lean on one another, to lean on the community God has granted us. And through that, we are able to, you know, uh, manage issues. We are able to find solutions to issues. So I would say first and foremost, if you are in Mamlaka, I'd say you're considering seeing someone and you're thinking this is an issue, I don't know how to go about it, come and see one of the pastors. And uh, I know they have links to many counselors and they would know, uh, you know, oh, this is what you're struggling, this is the challenge, uh, here is how we are working with you and here is where you might need somebody else to to come in and work with you on that journey so that if you are in Mamlaka my encouragement would be you know come see a pastor and they would be able to guide you to somebody whom you you your convictions might align together I, uh, I agree there, there's value in uh, working with someone who you have shared values with, right? Mm -hmm. And so as you consider a counselor, please consider one who has your shared values. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say consider one who is not so committed to more than just dwelling on the problem, but understanding, but seeking to grow and to heal from it. There are some who, you know, it festers. You just, you know, I am a, I'm a hot, whatever it is that I'm going through. And I, that that becomes my sense of identity, as opposed to this is where this is a place of weakness where I desire to grow and find strength and healing. Uh, I would probably also say um, somebody who well understands what it is that they are talking about, but they are well trained, uh, not one who just professes because they have a heart for it, you know. <laughs> and it's okay, like Maggie, I think, had alluded to earlier. Maybe maybe it was off camera that you may go and meet somebody and you have one, two sessions and you're like, I don't think this is working. It's actually okay to terminate and look for another. Pastor Ramson had mentioned that maybe it's also nice to 
find a referral from somebody who knows one who helped, maybe in that area. So if I'm tackling grief, and I know a grief counselor, a Christian grief counselor, then I can recommend that to somebody, uh, as opposed to finding a random person hoping they would be the one. But if I go and get it wrong, like Maggie is saying, it's okay, terminate and find uh, another. All right, now, parting shot. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'd say, um, you know, for one thing, uh, I'd say is the trust. There is scripture in Psalms 119, I think one of the 90th verses talks about God's word makes me wiser than my counselors, uh, or not counselors, makes me wiser than my elders. Mm -hmm. And I think the word of God is a good place. You know, it encourages to seek counsel. It tells us, you know, where there is plenty of counselors, victory is assured. So my encouragement would be, uh, you know, as you are going through this whole journey, because some of you, uh, someone might be watching and you're not necessarily mm -hmm. at the point of crisis right now, I would say live out what God calls us to live out in the scriptures. That would be the first place so that you are buttressing your life, so that you are building up the resources that are needed for the times of crisis. Um, you know, Bible talks about, again, you know, if you faint on the day of adversity, then your strength is small. Because it acknowledges there are days of adversity, and if you have not been built up and you are helped, it's easy for you to fall uh, for any, you know, for the challenges that are coming your way. So the first thing I'd say, you know, live out your faith, you know, live out those instructions that you are called to, you know, consistent reading of scripture, knowing God's word and living it out on your day to day, finding people to do life with, please do that. And as you are doing that, you know, as you are learning humility, when there will be a day for you that is needed for you to go for a referral, you will listen to it. You will acknowledge I am struggling in this easier than if you are somebody who hasn't gotten their pride in check, who, who doesn't lead, listen to any counsel. I think it is wisdom to live under the counsel of God's word. It, it never fails you. So that would be my parting shot. Okay. Um, I would say I think uh, at some point uh, Ramson talked about David. This 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 meme I had seen about King David in the Bible. They were talking about how he was such an emotional person. You know, in the afternoon he's crying. In the morning he was dancing. He was praising God. You know, he was. I think uh, psychologists would love him. He's in touch with his emotions. And uh, <laughs> there's this there's this uh, author. Peter, I think Skazero, who, who talks about um, emotionally unhealthy spirituality. And uh, it's just making that connection of uh, if my emotions, if I am not okay emotionally, that will somehow affect my spiritual life. I'm dealing with anger issues. Anger is bad in the Bible, but I want to pray it away. But um, the, the big thing with psychology is naming our feelings. I'm feeling angry. Why am I feeling angry? Because of A, B, C, D. So if I'm able to deal with, with my emotions, there's that uh, connection with my spirituality that, you know, I have dealt with my anger, I have dealt with my fears, then I'm able to also bring this to God because I have, you know, dealt with that. So I would say if, if, if someone is struggling with this idea of being a Christian in psychology and all that, um, God calls us to take care of our bodies. I think we have seen um, Ademo in Ruaka, you know, he, he does the physical bit and, you know, the God mm -hmm. bit. And, and so it's, it's important to make this connection that our emotional health, our mental health, God cares about that. And he has, um, he has people who are trained, who are good in that to uh, just help us navigate through this. Yes. All right. Um, I would say, uh, to write on what Ramsana said, if I fail in the day of adversity, then my strength is small. And that's, that doesn't have to be conde condescending or condemning. It mm -hmm. could be a reality that actually I need help. I'm mm -hmm. not strong enough to take this. Mm -hmm. uh, I may need support, right? So let it not be that it's a thing that you take and you just shine yourself down with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but Psalms 61 too would say, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than me. Mm -hmm. That means there are times my heart will be overwhelmed. There are situations that would be overwhelming for me. But the 
the point is not to look into myself because I don't have that. So I think my parting shot would be even as we seek uh, Christian counseling, let it lead us to Christ who is a rock who is higher than I, uh, than us, than us, <laughs> yes, because that's where higher the Higher than you, help. yeah, for sure. Yeah, because that's where the true <laughs> help comes from. Uh, so God bless you. I hope you have learned something and you're latching onto it. Uh, let's continue to soldier on in this journey here on earth as we pursue uh, to meet in heaven. Ah. Where there's no pain and suffering. Hopefully we meet on earth before we meet in heaven. That's true. Aya, out. Mm -hmm.